Easy Tigers. I hope everyone's fine and dandy. Welcome back as always. Just need to big up the Patreons and the guys that have supported me on PayPal. So thanks to you guys. I'm here making these videos and exploring these sites and giving you my two pence. If you want to join the gang, links are in the description. I'll leave my PayPal address in the description as well. Let's go straight away. Let's get straight to it. No messing around. So, like I did with uh, Nottingham, I painted a picture. I showed you what was going on across the whole of the town. A lot of it got destroyed in World War II and previous pandemics, but a lot of crumbs have been left for us. Now, if you're new to the channel, you will see that I have been exposing this golden layer for what it really is. Now, a lot of it has been left over in Nottingham, and I went round and I picked up all the golden nuggets and I've put it onto a little map to show you where, where's where. So this is all individual tourist attractions with a few other anomalies, should we say, chucked in with it. And then you have the castle on top and underneath you have over 800 caves spread out over the whole of Nottingham city centre. Now, this is all in this golden layer of sandstone. And don't forget, you have the City of Caves, which is dubbed one of the biggest cave networks in the United Kingdom. So, with that being said, I'm doing the same with Kimber. So we've looked at this one here, which is Holy Rock Calf. And then we went to a place called Val Rocks. And Drake Close. So we've got Nanny's Rock as well. So we went and done all this. So like I did, like I said, with Nottingham, I've done the same in Kinva, and we're showing you these anomalies. So this whole sandstone structure is actually underneath all of the bush and the trees here. Now I find it very peculiar that they've actually gone and done this. Now they've lined the whole of this sandstone structure with trees. So when the sandstone runs out, the trees run out. Now what's the, now, now? Why would you do that? Why would you absolutely hide every single piece of this sandstone? It don't make sense, does it? And obviously all the trees here, by the way, were planted just after World War II, after everything had been destroyed and blocked up. And I just want to add one more thing. Underneath here is a subterranean military network that you are not allowed to go nowhere near it. And even on the open days, you can only go in there, but you're not allowed to film or anything like that. So, right, the reason I'm showing you all that is because We've got another cave to add, or another complex to add to this structure that we're at. Now it's down the road a little bit, I just want to point out this interlocking, interlocking section here that this is meant to be some sedimentary rock, some seabed, but pff, it's geopolymer. So, this is it here, and this is called Samson Rocks. Absolutely fascinating. It had like a, an oven in there, a cooker, uh, paint on the wall. Concrete on the floor, tiles, all sorts of stuff. You had gel, polymer, signs of everything. So we're going to look at all this. I'm going to show you everything I come across, and it's going to knock your socks off. So let's have a look on the LiDAR. Now, this area actually got smoothed right out, and you can tell. So this cross section here is where we parked, basically. If you can see that little black dot that I just touched, that is where we park. So I'm just going to show you the elevation, which is 84 meters above sea level. So we are talking about 250 foot, at a guess, by the way, that's just an estimate. So 250 foot above sea level. Don't worry, I'm going to give you a little geology lesson later. And this is the same old script. If these sandstone or limestone structures have not been littered with trees, They've had mud or concrete put over them. Now this is the section in question. Look at that. So there was a rock complex on top of that. And it's rock complex in the narrative, but in my eyes it's a geopolymer structure. Probably the most primitive ones in England. And that's why there's nothing said about this. There's nothing online about any of this. And it's just, it's just been destroyed. And I, I, one other thing I will say is this particular part here is actually a grade two listed building. Even though it's been left to, to uh, go to rubbish. But you can see all the trees around and then a bit in the middle, it's just been smoothed out. But they've left loads of crumbs here for us, loads of crumbs. So let's have a look, see what other images are brought up on the LiDAR. So that's the image with the satellite. And you can, it, it's just bush, that's all you see, you wouldn't even know what's there. If you didn't have the LiDAR, you wouldn't get anywhere. 
And look, someone's planted trees along all of this sandstone and it gives you the outline of it as well. Very peculiar little part. So, let's go and have a look. We've had a look at the LiDAR. You can see that it's been completely smoothed out. Right, so let's go inside. Right, let's have a looky wookie. I will be getting a new torch because I can imagine it's quite annoying with a bright light like that. So I'm getting a new camera next month. Well, in three weeks actually. Along with a new light. Now in here, is, is, this, this just, just blows the narrative out of the box really because no way is this sedimentary rock. I've been in so much of these now in this area and they're, they're, I haven't come across one shell or one bit of marine biology which is what sedimentary rock is meant to be. I haven't come across any of it. And also look at the geopolymer blocks in front of the geopolymer mix. Very peculiar. And also one other characteristic I've noticed, I don't know if this is a bedroom or not, but you get these two massive channels in the corner of the rooms. That's quite a nice little shot there. But look at the angles going down the wall. These are meant to be striation marks. And uh, that means that's when the bed has fallen on top and been compressed. And we are looking at a particular part called the cementation part, which is when it's all been pressed and cemented together, basically. But there we go, look at these little depressions in the wall. So <laughs> the narrative says in the other houses that grandfather clock went there or a four-poster bed went there, but I don't know about that. Do not know about that. So that was obviously our living room. Look at this. Look at the joint marks. This one's making an X here. What's going on there, though? There go. You've got the window frame would have gone in there. Still a little bit of paint on the wall. Now, that room there had been concreted over. So that tells me this was last inhabited probably late 1800s, early 1900s, and then the people ducked out of there. So you've got these two lines on the wall here, which obviously clearly a shelf went there. And there's remnants of paint. But what was the best thing about this was <laughs> you've got the cooker and a fire in here. So <clears throat> the food would get cooked on the top bit and you'd make the fire at the, the bottom bit here. Yeah, I'll just show you now. I'm still shot. So the fire underneath would, would cook up the food on the top. And there's actually a chimney here that I'll show you later on that goes right to the top of the rock. And then you've got the fireplace. But like I said, I don't believe this is ancient, this part here. This is just a modern... There you go, the fire goes in there, heats up the food above. So this is a modern addition. It's probably done 150 years ago, 100 years ago maybe. But it's incredible that it's left like this, eh? And it gives you an insight to what people used to live, live in like just 100 years ago. Or 200 years. So <clears throat> around the walls you'll always see these imprints, like these boxes. Uh, some of them still got paint on them. Some have got lintels at the bottom like this. But what I will stress out is please keep an eye out on this red sandstone because there is no marine biology or stones or anything whatsoever in here. And if, if sedimentary rock is marine biology that's fallen to the ground and compressed and cemented, this is not what we're seeing. We're not seeing this at all. And again, I don't want to, I keep saying the same things, but sedimentary rock is seabed. And we are so high above sea level, we're 250 feet above sea level. Now, if we've already had a flood and we're living in them times when the water level has risen, how is there a seabed 250 foot above the current sea level? Just don't make sense. Look at this. So if this is a seabed, why have you got this stripe going down there like that? Like it's just been, like it's a bandage going over it. It's almost like a bandage going over it. It's very peculiar stuff. Well, it's peculiar if you don't understand it. I get it. I fully get it. I'm just trying to show you guys what I've come across. And hopefully, I'm not trying to push it to you. You think what you want. You do what you want. It's up to you. But hopefully you can see what I see. And look at the window seal. Imagine getting windows fitted for this. <laughs> I suppose you just take a measurement and go down to the local glass shop. No questions asked. But again, the striations. But look at the background. What a lovely view, eh? And again, I just want to point out, if this is sedimentary, why is it at the highest point? Why is the seabed, like, what, what, why, how have, how have geologists accepted this? That the seabed is higher than 
the land. Like, that don't make no sense, does it? The seabed is higher than the ground level. Think about that for a minute, because it's really messed up. So I, I guess these geologists just have to be yes men. Anyone going to university that wants that degree, because you've been bent to a degree, you're just a yes man. And it don't make you smart they're in a university. All that means is that you can repeat something that's been told to you. Doesn't mean you're smart. Doesn't mean you're smart whatsoever. Smart is when you can think for yourself and work things out. And unfortunately, they don't teach you how to think, they teach you what to think. Again, the depressions in the wall, like what would go there? You had the same on the other side, you have these two massive, looks like, I can only imagine like a, a four post of bed, but, uh, but I don't know, I really don't know what would go there. And I'd like to see the people that are in here. Were they hobbits? But you can see, the look at these joint marks. This is good. Look at the triangle in that one. What's going on there, eh? The geometry in this is phenomenal. It really is phenomenal. You can't have this much geometry. It, like, I know nature does do amazing stuff, but this is a sedimentary. So this is stuff that's been compressed. So if it's been compressed, you, you shouldn't have all this geometry. It should be, like, completely flat. But never mind. Never, never mind. And I just want to point out here, the striation marks to the right-hand side of the wall here are completely different and not in line with the left-hand side. And my, in my opinion, these striation marks are level marks from where the geopolymer has been poured in sections and in levels. Here you see a bit of a tiled floor. Again, this is a modern feature. It's probably about 100 to 150 years old. Now I want to look outside because it's very, 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 very strange. I'm telling you, it's very strange. You can't, you cannot call this sedimentary rock. You really can't. And I mean, look at this part here. Like, what's going on here? The striation marks don't even go across the whole of this thing. So you've got the wall either side on the right-hand side, left-hand side, but you've got this pillar in the middle, which separates the door and the window. But the stri there's no striation marks. Look at it. It's just like put together like blobs of stuff it's like blobs of geopolymer and it seems like it got damaged by the window for some reason whatsoever probably in a war or, or a previous war and they've just made these geopolymer blocks because there is other bits of sandstone around here so it's not hard to break that down and remake blocks out of this material no problems no questions asked no problems so here, I just want to point this out. So these bits here, this is where, the, the, I've come across two explanations for this. Now one is where they say underwater sand dunes have been compressed together. Or the other one is it is seabeds. Now let's have a look at this because it is a load of cobblers when you look at it. And this is what I mean, you have to be a yes man to accept this stuff. You really do. None of it makes any sense whatsoever. Bearing in mind we're 250 feet above above the current sea level and um, if you believe in anything like the narrative or what we're told then you would you would believe that we've already had a flood and we're living in end times so the sea level would have been lower and there's actually proof of that because we can actually see dwellings and ruins are being exposed now the water is receding due to droughts so that does prove to you that the sea level was a lot lower at one point not higher so you can't sit there and tell me that this structure, 250 feet above sea level, is sedimentary rock. Look at all these little features that I found. It don't make sense. So you're telling me the top left hand one is where all the seabeds met. That's the corner of all the seabeds in that area. And then you're telling me another seabed went on top of that at a 45 degree angle. You're, you're kidding me mate, you're kidding me. Relate sedimentary characteristics of ancient grain deposits, sedimentary structures and geometry. But look at this. Look at this. Explain these. These are going in different directions and one of them is completely smooth. So what happened in that, in that particular part then, in them 10 million years there? Because let me just explain to you. They're talking 250 million years ago this stuff was done. And you can't even comprehend that. Like It's a load of cobblers. Listen, I'm interested in the bottom right-hand side. Salt crystals glue the layers together. Cementation. 
rock mass formed is sedimentary. So this is what we're told this is. So that little corner part that I've shown you on the corner of that structure is where you can actually see the striation marks are meeting a straight line. So that tells you it's showing you this bottom right hand corner. And that means that that is showing you loads and loads of sedimentary layers that have been compressed together. But they're on a corner above a house on a window. Do you get what I'm saying? None of it's making sense. So you're telling me this is meant to be an ocean bed, sedimentary rock, but we're talking about 100 square foot, 250 feet above sea level. Like, and another question is, what's the smallest seabed you know? Oh, oh. Sedimentary rock displays certain characteristics that allows draw conclusions about the history, landforms and rock formations. One such feature, bedding, this is the result of sedimentary setting out in large, flat areas. So, how comes we're only finding this on hills? Why is it only hills that we find this in? I don't find no flat limestone or sandstone. I haven't found anything flat. Literally, I'm going in and out of these massive structures. Now look, from sedimentary sediment to rock. The sedimentary rocks are formed through a series of process, erosion, deposition, compaction and cementation. Cementation is the one that we are going in and out of. We are walking around the cementation. So, and that's the bottom one here, this bottom one that it says here. So this is meant to be underground. The cementation happens underground, but we don't see that. We're seeing this at the highest points above surface. surface. Look at this. Does this look like striation marks to you? This looks like some mix has been poured and lime is leaching through. This is a geopolymer house. And look at these. Right, so you're telling me this is the corner of a seabed. Give me a break. Like I said, you've got to be a yes man to go in and out of university. So formation of sedimentary rocks, like I said, the cementation is what we are interested in. So that is what you get down here. Okay, underneath all the seabeds, but we are finding it well above sea level at the top of mountains. So it's not making sense. So if this is sedimentary rock, where's all the rest of it? Why is it on just a little tiny speck poking out well above sea level? I know I keep repeating myself, I'm sorry guys, but it's, just, it's really like... I just can't believe how much of a con this geology business is when you start looking into it. It really is a load of cobblers. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And everywhere I go, I've had a 100% success rate with my blueprint. So I know exactly where to go to find all these ancient structures. And no one's even finding this stuff in the United Kingdom. So this is a particular picture I'm on about. This part here, look, one, two, three, four. There, there's six layers there. So, and they're meant to be millions and millions of years of compressed deposition. Depositing, sorry. And then uh, a 45 degree angle, like what happened? Did the, did the earth tilt and then decide to do it? And, and start doing other layers, you know? Uh, it really is very peculiar stuff. It really is. And that's why I've not really had a geologist approach me because they can't explain this stuff that I'm saying. They can't. And they just choose, it's called cognitive dissonance. They'll see that, they'll call me crackers and go to the next video. So have a look at this. Right, so the terminology of subaqueous dunes. So this is just another theory that they've come up with to explain the striation marks. So the first one was sedimentary rock that's been compact and cemented. Now this is the same one, but they're saying it's actually sand dunes. So this is how you get the striation marks that are abrupt. But again, look at this. Look at the smoothness. They'll change directions that way. Bearing in mind, like I said, these are millions and millions and millions of years. The first section there is probably about, it's meant, it's meant to be 50 million years. <laughs> so just imagine that first layer got, got laid after 50 million years by nature, bit by bit. It's just a, it's all a load of cobblers, isn't it, really? This even had a drain, like drain at the top, roof, guttering.
But it's funny though, because the further you go into the rock, you lose all the striation marks. I mean, look at this part here. Either that's eroded very well, or the striations. But this heart, look, you've got all lines going up over across the striations. So on this side, the striations are vertical, sorry, horizontal. And then you've got a diagonal part going across it. You can't explain this one. This one is just unexplainable. But the best thing is I come across something even more messed up and you ain't even going to believe it. So you, they're calling this, 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 right, I'll shut my mouth and I'll get to it in a minute. So now I'm on top of the rock house, okay? So I'm above it now, looking down, and we found, like, this must have been like a flue or a chimney. So it's lined with the sandstone blocks, but then you can see that it's obviously been bored out. So it connects to these, obviously. So you've got the fire and you've got the cooker down there. But people have thrown so much rubbish down there that you can't see the connection that it goes through. But we're directly above that dwelling. So if I was to fall through, I'd fall through into the bedroom right now. And look, you can see how high we are. Well, don't give it no justice, but we are really high. And again, now this is going to knock your socks off because this, what I've done here, and the cheek of it, what these people have done. Right, see these blocks here. This is actually steps going down to the level of the rock houses and I'm standing above the rock houses like I'm on the roof of it now. So I found a load of corrugated sheet, like metal, some real proper metal. Right, let me start this again. I see a load of bush and a lump in the ground. I thought, what is this? And I started pulling away all the bush and then I come across this corrugated metal. So I pulled the metal away and I come across this. Now this proves that all of this sandstone that I've come across is geopolymer because they've made a tiny little wall. Look at the imprint. That's an imprint of something. This is a geopolymer mix that has been cast into a wall, a tiny little wall. Now imagine these cats are telling us this is sedimentary rock. So this is meant to be the bottom of a seabed. So you're telling me we have a seabed that's one foot by four foot long. Look at this. Look at this. These cats hid this. They hid this. They couldn't break it down. They didn't want to break it down. That's how lazy they are. They didn't want to break it down. So they put corrugated steel all around it and then covered it with bush. But Paul Cook finds stuff like this all day long. So they're saying this is sedimentary. But how could this be sedimentary? Look at the size of it. Look at the actual size of it. This is a geopolymer wall that they've tried to hide. Look at it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And I pulled that top one up. I'd already started filming. I'd already started doing taking it apart before I'd filmed, by the way. So that's why you see it half done. Can't believe it. But look, that's the wall. So it's literally the size of... It's just like four foot by two foot high by one foot, one foot thick. Just a blob sitting there, perfectly square. Look, sections on sections just put on top of each other. So if this was natural, how did this happen? Look at it. But this wall is separating these two cavity spaces either side of the wall. But the binder has left this geopolymer. This is so old that this is just falling apart now. Just like the buildings that we've been in, the, the geopolymer structures. But look at it. Look at how flat that is. Big up nature for this. Cheers for that, mate. But look, unbelievable. I can't believe it. So this is a micro version of these massive, massive sandstone mountains. Do you get me? So this would be like, imagine like, in Nottingham, they built castles and all sorts of stuff on top of this. But this is the steel that they put. Look, look, they covered it up with that. And then put, look at that, dogs, eh? And then put all, let all the grass and that and all the bush grow over it and try and hide it. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, so that proves that all that material is geopolymer. Because you wouldn't have a seabed that's one foot by four foot. Look at that. A little blob of it. It's just separating. It might, look at that. It's a wall. That is an absolute wall. Seabed, my backside. Sedimentary rock. Come on, guys. And the fact that they tried to hide it, it just goes to show you, and I told you I was right, all this material is geopolymer. If this wasn't geopolymer, you wouldn't have a little blob of it there like that. Because it don't make sense, does it? How could that be sedimentary rock? Compressed. Compressed marine biology. It's not.
that'd be completely flat. That'd have, that'd have, that'd have made a flat. Now you get the idea. Anyway, look what else I come across here. So this was an aqueduct or something similar to that, maybe channeled water to the place. But the whole place has been smashed up. And uh, we also come across a few other things as well. Um, we managed to get into a couple of places. Snip, snip, if you know what I mean. So I've got the footage for that, and it's going to knock it. We come across massive, humongous shafts. Man, I've got so much stuff to, stuff to show you. You guys ain't going to believe it. Like, you're so lucky at the minute. So, anyway, I hope I've knocked your socks off. If I haven't, I'm going to. Anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and all that jazz. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've got a lot more stuff to show you. I've got two places that we went in with, um, should we just say, snip, snip, and got into a couple of places. That, that, that footage on its own is going to knock your socks off. And uh, I just want to big up um, Dutch Sense for shouting out. Proper, proper helping me out, getting me to 100k. That's my goal because, like I said, get me to 100k and I'm going to be able to explore this world with the revenue from YouTube. So I'm going to be dedicating my life to do all this for you guys, you know? Anyway, like, subscribe, comment, share, and all that jazz. Please share this video if you've enjoyed it. One love, guys. Ta da. Ta da.